This was not inevitable. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Now, people inside the White House or national security establishment are obviously extremely concerned about how ineptly the Biden administration is handling the current Ukraine situation. Those individuals leaked information to The New York Times, which today published the embarrassing details of the Biden team's futile attempts to woo China into helping us avert war in Ukraine. The Times noting that each time the Chinese officials rebuffed the Americans, U.S. officials got intel showing Beijing had shared information with Moscow, telling the Russians that the United States was trying to sow discord and that China would not try to impede Russian plans and actions. Now, the very idea that the administration thought that they could get the CCP to act in our interest is delusional. Well, that's the thinking of someone who knows literally nothing about the way our biggest adversary operates. Yet that's been the exact mindset of Biden's China point man for over a year now. Remarkably short time, China has produced unprecedented economic growth. China's partnership and leadership on this issue of extraordinary international consequence is essential. It is imperative that we, the United States, the second biggest emitter, and China, and the rest of the world are all pulling together in the same direction in this critical effort. Climate change. Well, John Kerry has been an embarrassment to the country since he returned from Vietnam to condemn his fellow troops. And this is just one more insult, and this time with heavy consequences for America. China was never going to work with us on climate, never going to work with us on Ukraine, nothing that's not in its self-interest. And perhaps Biden's kind of now realizing this obvious fact, which would explain his deer in the headlights look when he was asked about it. Are you urging China to help isolate Russia? I'm not prepared to comment on that at the moment. <laughs> Translation, uh, we already tried that and it failed epically. In fact, it's totally backfired. China and Russia now seem closer than ever. Now, first, China refused to call what Russia did in Ukraine an invasion. And then they blamed us for the carnage that Putin unleashed. And today, President Xi personally offered his support for Russia on a call with Putin. According to the readout, Xi also expressed the importance of rejecting a Cold War mentality, adding that he seriously and uh, respects the reasonable security concerns of all countries. Look, the fact is, China doesn't care about people being slaughtered in Ukraine or anywhere else. Heck, let's not forget, China funnels enough fentanyl into our country every year to kill thousands, hundreds of thousands of our citizens. They're committing genocide against the Uyghurs. They crush freedom in Hong Kong. And now they're funding Putin's conquest of Ukraine by buying up their energy and even their wheat. Now, this invasion, in many ways, was made in China. And the goal is to test the waters for an attack on Taiwan. And once Xi thinks that he can invade Taiwan, he will. But right now, there are steps that we could and should immediately take to stop that from becoming an inevitability and make Xi just maybe realize that he's underestimated the resolve and the strength of America. And these actions could make him think twice about further cooperation with Russia. We need to gradually begin what will be, at times, a very painful process, but to decouple from China. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to require astute political leadership, steely determination, and a little consumer sacrifice on our part. This will include delinking our manufacturing on key technologies, raising tariffs where necessary to preserve Made in America, and canceling student visas. About 340,000 Chinese students studying here right now. Why are we training China's next generation, all of whom are approved to be here by the CCP? Why are we training them in STEM fields? And at some point down the road, we know they're just going to turn around and use what they've learned here against us or our allies. In order for America to regain our leverage with China and Russia, which we desperately need, we have to drop the notion that either will ever care about adhering to a rules-based international order. We keep hearing them blathering about uh, in international think tanks. Thanks. That's just cooked up in think tanks and later invoked 
by ignorant globalists like John Kerry. You have to understand the long arc of Chinese and Russian history to understand that both Putin and Xi are both unfailingly ruthless and supremely nationalistic. Meanwhile, they exploit weakness wherever they see it, whether it's financial or cultural. So Russia and China respect only strength, and this administration has shown them only weakness from day one. Now, once we were a driver of our own foreign policy, but now under Biden, we take cues from other nations that don't necessarily share our national security priorities, like Germany. We were once proud as a <laughs>